In this video I'm going to show you how we can inoculate a plate to produce a bacterial lawn across the plate and we do that so we can test our antibiotic rings. So the first thing we need to do is we need a nutrient agar plate and on this plate we're going to label the date, the type of bacteria and the student's name. Now that needs to be on the base of the agar plate on the part where the agar is. So first thing we need to do is we need to prepare our suspension that we're going to use to inoculate the plate. So we're going to take a small vial and we're going to flame the neck. Now because this is plastic we need to be careful that we don't hold it under for too long. So we're just going to fill it with, well we're just going to put uh, just a few mils of water in it. Now what we're going to do is inoculate this chew with some of our single colonies, just several single colonies. We want to make a suspension that's about as cloudy as this, which is very hard to see, but this is what we call a McFarlane standard, which is a standard of turbidity. It's going to be very difficult to see. But this is a McFarlane one, this is what we're trying to match it to. It's a measure of how turbid or how cloudy the liquid is. So we're matching it to that. So the first thing we need to do is flame our loop. Before we move on any further, we need to label our vial with a sharpie, student's name, bacteria, and today's date. Flame our loop. And we're going to take some single colonies from our master plate. So flame the loop again. Take some single colonies from our master plate. Not very much, it just fell off then. Okay. Okay. And now I'm going to use my little finger to hold the, the lid. And then we're going to put the loop inside and give it a shake. Shake off that bacteria and it's going to make it a little bit cloudy. And we're going to compare that cloudiness to McFarlane standards, the McFarlane 1. Hold it up. Yep, that's about right. Okay, flame the loop again. We won't need the loop, so you can set that aside. Okay, next thing we need to do is inoculate the plate. So we've got our agar here and it's labelled and we need to take a couple of drops of our inoculant using a transfer pipette and then we're going to use a, we call it a, a hockey stick or a tea and we're using that tea spreader to spread the inoculant on the plate. So let's go and do that. We just need to make sure you've got everything ready to go in the zone of inhibition open up our sterile transfer for PET, open up our vial, remember to hold the lid of the vial, okay, take some of the inoculant up into the transfer for PET and it's just literally just a couple of drops on the plate, not very much, it's very easy to put too much on. Everything that we've used will then be disposed of, so we just set it aside for now. We'll grab a new tea. And what we need to do is spread our bacteria around the whole plate. Again, be careful with it, um, with the agar that you don't tear it. We're trying to spread across the whole plate. Once you've done that, we can just leave it to dry for just a, a couple of minutes. And then we're gonna get our antiseptic disc. Now this is not a real disc, but it looks exactly like this. Just This one's just a bit bigger. And we're gonna position this in the middle of our 
plate and just push it down a little bit with um, maybe with a another aseptic tea spreader. And hopefully that'll stick reasonably well. But we just need to push it down a little bit because when we put it in the incubator, we're going to put it upside down like this. So just to finish this off, a little bit of tape. And this is going to go in the incubator for 48 hours. And what we're going to be measuring is the zone of inhibition around each of our antibiotic discs. Of course, when we're finished, everything that we've used to handle bacteria needs to be disposed of in a biohazard bag. And then we finish by disinfecting the bench, taking our gloves up, or taking our, our, our mask and our gown off and our mask off, removing our gloves, washing our hands.